Thank you. Not an easy spot to fill last of the day, but um, I'll see how I go. I uh, wanted to cover Bogard 3, and, and really I, I didn't want to go through the sort of the technical aspects and, and, and how we got to this point. I wanted to provide an update of, of how the product will transition, um, what, we, what we are doing in the field this year and sort of um, what we expect with the technology over the next few years. So very briefly I'll cover why Bolgard 3, um, quickly talk about the um, resistance management plan that's been proposed. Um, uh, the, what's happening in September, only a, only a month away, we can start seeing, I heard today there was Paul Grundy's got some cotton in the ground um, in Emerald in his project, so it's not far away that we'll be, we'll be planning, so we'll see some Bolgard 3 go in um, in not too distant future. And then really just those transition plans, uh, you know, going from Bolgard 2 um, to move into Bolgard 3. I guess one of the, um, and, and Tom's presentation really touched on it, we, we are incredibly lucky um, the situation that we have in Australia with our, with our biotechnology and the product that we have in cotton um, here. If you look, um, there's, a, there's a lot of good things going our way. We only have one particular crop that has the technology. Um, we don't have multiple crops and, and, um, and we have a very proactive industry that has taken resistance management um, very seriously and, and has been pre, uh, preemptive in its approach. So we don't believe from both monitoring programs, we, we don't believe we've seen movements in resistance frequency and we've been able to bring new technologies or new proteins to market um, ahead of time before we see any resistance sort of moving. So I think that's a, a very envi enviable position that we have as opposed to what, what may have to happen in, in other parts of the world. So that's uh, incredibly important. And so really the, the extension of Bolgard 3 is having that third protein, which really does make it you know, more difficult for those insects to develop um, resistance. Um, and you know, we've got modelling and modelling can you know, say a whole heap of range of things, but we're, we're very confident that this uh, will provide some certainty about our BT toxins, um, having that technology working for, for a, you know, a long time into the future. Uh, along with the changes with Bolgard 3, there was, there was a lot of discussion around our current resistance management plan and what it could be um, within a, a Bolgard 3 system. And so while these, uh, we're still waiting for APVMA approval, they have provided us a permit to operate in this coming season with this Bolgard 3 RMP. So that, um, you know, that would suggest that the, the, um, when we do have the full um, approval that you know, this might be the, the RMP that we operate under. So the first one, the first major change is, is around the planting windows. So for the majority of the, the area, um, so south of central Queensland, there really won't be, a, you know, a, an, I guess a, a planting window that's going to impact agronomic decisions on when farmers might want to plant. Central Queensland, it's a little bit different. Um, they'll have a, a wider window than what they have today from August through to end of October, but there'll still be an opportunity to plant after October through to December. They'll just need some more refuge um, uh, a, d a double of the refuge that's required if they want to plant in that wider window in central Queensland. The second key change is around refuge area and essentially it's a, a for uh, unsprayed refuges, it's halving the refuge area. So if it's um, uh, unsprayed cotton it goes from 10% to 5%. For, uh, uh, for pigeon peas it goes from 5% to 2.5%. There's some, there's some other changes around the size of the, the refuge and the positioning of the refuge that, that have been put into, into place in this, but I, I don't want to go into too much detail just uh, for this pr uh, presentation. And the third one is around pupa busting. So it's a, a recognition that it, at some times um, pupa busting um, may not have been an effective tactic, um, particularly for those really you know, early crops. So for crops that are defoliated uh, before the end of March, 
there won't be a need to pupo bust those fields. However, there will be a, a requirement to slash or mulch those crops within four weeks of, of harvest so that we can control that regrowth that could be a, a harbour for, for, for insects. If uh, defoliation occurs after 31st of March, there is a requirement to pupae bust, but the pupae busting, the definition of pupae busting has changed um, a little bit. So previously it was 10 centimetres across the whole surface of, of the ground, so that, in, you know, on an irrigated, that meant the, the furrows as well as the, the um, tops of the beds. Um, that's, that's changed to 10 centimetres, 30 centimetres either side of the plant line. So I think that will make a, you know, a pretty significant practical difference for people having to, to pupae bust. Just to move to the regulatory timelines, um, for domestic timelines there's three, three approvals that are required for ZANs, OGTR and the APVMA. And so we have two of those, the Fazant's approval and OGTR, and we're currently waiting on the uh, application that's in with the APVMA. We expect that uh, result, uh, uh, a decision from the APVMA later this year, but it certainly will be after we plant this, this coming crop. In addition, uh, outside of the Australian approval process, we do have a requirement um, Do you reckon no was the right answer? <laughs> so we do have a requirement um, within our global stewardship commitment so to have, so we don't disrupt trade, international trade, so our, our major trading partners that have regulatory systems that we seek to have approvals in those countries um, before we launch our technologies. And so they're, they're similar um, agencies to Fazant's. And there's still still a few of those that we, we haven't um, achieved yet, but we're likely to, we're hoping through the course of this season to have those approvals in those countries. As a result of that, um, that we don't have those approvals in those export countries, um, we need to, to conduct trials under stewarded conditions. And, and so there's really two things, two areas that we have to operate these trials this year. One is under a permit from the APVMA. Um, it's a research permit, so it, it allows for us to do activities that are uh, relating to research. So seed production is, is included in that. The ambassador program from CSD collecting data about the management of Bolgard 3 um, and importantly the variety trial program so that growers can get a good understanding of what these Bolgard 3 varieties are going to be like um, before they get to, to plant them on their own properties. It's a maximum of 20,000 hectares and it's quite, I guess it's quite a large permit um, but you know we have to, you know the majority of that area will be related to those activities that I just, just detailed then and it will be utilising the Bolgard 3 RMP. So in some instances, a farmer might have one field of Bolgard 3 and they'll have some requirements around RMP for that and the remainder will be operating under the Bolgard 2 RMP. Because we don't have approvals in, in some of these export countries like China, um, we have to do what's called uh, stewarded trial protocols. So that really relates to training the growers who, and, um, and agronomists that are involved um, before we put some uh, seed in the field. Um, buffers and isolation, not, not as rigorous as what we'd seen with, with the OGTR, but, but still quite, quite important to have those aspects in place. And then also the ability to segregate that Bolgard 3. And that, that will all be dependent on, on when and if we get these approvals from these other countries. But we have to, to go into this planting um, with being ready for us to have to segregate at ginning if, if we need to. So it doesn't relate to um, lint. Lint is not, not covered under, under these requirements for export, but seed will have to be used domestically and, and won't be able to be exported. Um, farmers have, have, for the most part, already been selected for the program. 
and um, as I said, seed production, the ambassador program, the variety trials. And I think you know, through those programs at CSD operate, there'll be plenty of opportunity um, during the course of the next, next cropping season um, to, to be able to see the varieties, to be able to understand what the technology's like. We'll certainly have a very large um, launch pro program next year, probably around February. Um, we'll, we'll have some activities around this and also some accreditations. And just to reinforce, and until we, Monsanto receives all import approvals, we must operate under these stewarded conditions. So the transition. Um, again, Monsanto anticipates that we'll have these regulatory approvals um, in place um, that will allow us to have a commercial launch in, in 16, 17 season. And that's, that's where it's looking at the moment, but I guess some of these um, approvals are, are never certain, so we have to, have to still be very mindful of, of, of that. We, we absolutely understand that grower confidence in, in both the varieties and the technology and how they perform together is, is absolutely critical um, and will determine to an extent the speed of the transition from Bulgar 2 to Bulgar 3. Um, and I really urge everybody here to go along to the CSD um, meetings uh, during the next month because I, I think you know, you'll get a, a lot of information about those new varieties and, and from what I've been hearing, you know, it's all the reports are, are very good. We're going to see at, at least as good a performance as what we had for Bulgard too, you know, but, but even, even some uh, you know, possibility of increased yields on those Bulgard 3 lines. And I've got, as a transition, I've, I've said there it's unlikely that Bulgard 2 will be planted after the 17-18 uh, season. And so, um, you know, after that date, uh, we'll probably start working on, um, you know, a bit like what we did with Ingard, the transition from Ingard to Bulgard 2. After that date, we'll, we'll have only Bulgard 3 in the marketplace. So just to summarise, uh, we really do believe that Bulgard 3, um, uh, bringing that technology in early before we see um, issues in the field is a critical and important step to protect the BT toxins long into the future. We'll see some significant benefits through changes in the RMP. Um, in the 2015-16 season, uh, the trial program is being planted under an APVMA permit and it's for research purposes only and operating under stewarded conditions. There'll be lots of opportunity to see Bulgard 3 in your area this year. And Monsanto anticipates that all regulatory requirements will be achieved, allowing for a commercial launch in the 16-17 season. And I've got, and I've, Kristen's just noticed that I've pinched this slide from hers because it's a, a great shot of her trial site up in the Darling Downs at, um, at Stuart Armitage's last year. Um, any questions at all?